Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadreando Podcast. I am your host, Marcy. And today we have an amazing guest. Her name is Mary, and I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Mary Rodriguez. I am a mother of three. Um, I have two boys on the spectrum. I work full time. I've been a single mom and raising two boys with disabilities. So, and my daughter. So, <laughs> it's a lot. Amazing. <laughs> it's a, I'm everywhere. <laughs> I'm always everywhere. <laughs> uh, mm. I can only imagine. Mm. Um, yeah. So today's topic, comadres, is transitioning options for children with autism. And the reason why the topic came up was. Um, First of all, Aiden's going to high school now, and I it's only four years. And I'm fast. worried about what's going to happen. Yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. So I'm worried about what's going to happen in the future or what his options can be. Um, so also, I wanted to have a mom with kids with, that have more than one child with autism. Right. The, and then my, the my, my sons because, are 25 and 20, so... It's, yeah. yeah. So I definitely wanted to bring her on because um, <laughs> as far as autism moms go, she definitely has a master's <laughs> in dealing with all of that and the complexity, complexities of it. Yeah. So um, we're going to get started. You said both of the boys have um, autism. Do you know what level more or less or if there's any other Jordan that are linked is to it? The, Jordan is the older one. I don't know like level i don't know if they have different levels now for it um yeah now now they were telling me oh my kids are level four i don't know what that means yeah because they still don't i have to do research because you know i have no idea yeah they don't do that like any meetings or anything with the care manager or anything nobody talks about levels jordan is functioning wise well jordan who's 25 and he went to school up until he was 21 um he's they don't like to label them high functioning because high functioning puts you in a different category of autism. Um, but he is fully verbal. Um, when you do, you can have a conversation, like real conversation with him, but you could tell when you speak to him, you're not speaking to a 25 year old. Okay. Right. You could so see that mentality is a little younger. Yeah. Um, so that mentally he's a little bit delayed with regards to yes. age, like, Right? Yeah, like okay. um, they haven't. Wow, it's been a long time since they've set him like at an age level. Because once they reach like Aiden's going to high school, they try not to put them like oh, you know, psychologically mm -hmm. they're at this level. They want to see what they can do, at, you know, in the moment. Because those years that okay. Aiden, I mean, Aiden has he's just starting high school. He's going to be in school till he's twenty one. Those years go by very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Very fast. How how old is Aiden? He's 13. He's going to be 14 in November. 14. Okay. So he has seven more years to be in Board of Ed, under Board of mm -hmm. Ed. But honestly, those, to me, those years have gone by, it felt like two years. So, yeah. and <laughs> because everything moves so fast and then I, I'm, you know, I'm not a stay at home mom. I work. Not that stay at home moms are not as busy, yeah. but I'm working. I'm making doctor's appointments. I'm making evaluation appointments. I'm working full time. Um, and I've always mm -hmm. worked full time. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it goes by really, 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 really fast. So now Dylan yeah. is, um, he's considered right in the middle, like moderate to severe to lower. He's like right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's my son. You're, he's like right in the middle. Like you can talk to him, but you can't have a conversation with him. Um, sometimes you have to, uh, tell him not to answer you in one word answers you know you always have to keep prompting him for certain things certain things he's very independent speech. right on a speech is, and really pretty much i've noticed with my experience that's how they determine their level of what they're capable of doing because dylan is considered nonverbal. he necessarily won't be able to may not be able to hold a job because he also cannot be travel trained and for you to be um, given employment for supported employment after you graduate, you have to be able to be travel trained, which they analyze your child around 16, 17 to see if he can, mm -hmm. if they feel that the school feels that they can go to the travel training program. It's scary, mm -hmm. but if I always tell parents, don't let your fear hold you back from letting them try something. 
it, it's yep. my son's 25 he works three blocks from home I, I still get scared because he has to cross northern boulevard in queens it's a big i mean i get scared that he's crossing the oh street God. but he's been traveling on his yeah. own since he was 17. you know he used to, Ay, mio. <laughs> yeah yeah but it's like i need to see how independent how far his independence goes because that's going to determine what he's going to need what supports he's going to need in the future um mm -hmm. so for example um usually the schools i know the schools i don't know every borough the district 75s in every borough seems to be a little different for some yeah, reason yeah, yeah. um so i don't know what each school offers but once aiden starts for example aiden's this is really crucial and first and foremost any mother who still hasn't started medicaid waiver services please do not wait until your child is going to exit board of ed the process I now need to have a whole episode on that i need to have a whole episode on that because a lot of the parents don't know that they're entitled to and that. i realized like I actually that, have yeah, somebody who's who's looking, yeah i actually realized that when jordan was graduating and we were going to the meeting when i was going to the meetings in school how many parents your child is graduating they're turning 21 they're graduating this summer all this time that their kid has had this diagnosis never bothered to get they said they never knew about it that could be true that could be not true you know unfortunately some parents are not paying attention to what's coming home from school because that's where i found out about it it's i got the information mm -hmm. from school you know i didn't know the any other parents is that i didn't know any other parents when jordan was diagnosed the whole thing with me is that i get it they send flyers home but let me tell you something if aiden doesn't open i mean i open his backpack like religiously but i can see a parent that is like working until late at night no importa home. Spend no, importa, a little bit of time no, with the kid. no, 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 but there's people. Okay. So for example, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to be devil's advocate. There's people that learn in a different way that they don't learn, um, by reading, right. They, they need to hear it or, or like see it like visually, like, or experience it to be able to understand. So the thing is like, you can see a paper in the backpack, unless it has like really colorful, usually the copies are terrible. Um, unless it's like really colorful and then somebody is like, hey, fulana, I sent you an important paper. Can you please make sure that you check your son's backpack or your kid's backpack and, and check it out? I know there's parents that are not going to. Right. And my other. And I, as a and teacher, I would, as a right. teacher, as a teacher, right. I know that. And, like, and that's it's, how and it's the same thing are. as, you know, at, at, through my journey, uh, uh, through my journey, because this is a never ending journey. This is my journey until mm -hmm. God takes me home. So, um, mm -hmm. what I've learned from teachers, counselors, principals, vice principals, it's the parents who are more, who are there, they, they actually have parents that they didn't see until their kids were graduating because they would not go to a parent teacher conference. And I was like, yep. they're like, Oh, thank you for coming. You don't understand what this, I said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Like my daughter is uh, atypical, so she doesn't have, and I was always present you know like i made mm -hmm. sure i checked the bag because you know don't let me find out from somebody else that you was you know you're supposed to give me a notice or something <laughs> well no she she didn't cut school but like you know there might be notice she went to catholic school so she you know might be notices in there about meetings you know catholic school runs on a different schedule so i'm like uh, you know don't mm -hmm. let the teacher tell me oh i didn't see you what you mean you didn't see me where was i supposed to be because even though i'm a full-time mm -hmm. working parent I made sure I was present. You could always make sure that you're present. Don't, don't feel that your job is holding me back, holding you back. Cause I, 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 and I tell all moms who work, you have to advocate for yourself at work. I don't take a job or work anywhere without telling them from the beginning, look, this is my situation. It's not that I'm out every other day, but there are days that I may not be here and you need to be okay with that. And if it's not, then, you know, it's not, you know, you really have to advocate for yourself because they're not going to, mm -hmm they don't care but once you speak yeah. up they have to take account of it you know what i'm saying so True. um services this is the reason the problem with transitioning if you don't have these services in place or have a care manager in place and your child graduates 
they can't even start a transition process into anything because he can't do supported employment. He can't go to a day hab. Uh, you can't get any outside whatever services, whatever services that you need once he graduates. Um, like, you know, uh, like uh, after they graduate, there is no speech therapy. There is no OT. There is none of that. You have to research it and get it on your own. But if you have you know, um, OPWDD Medicaid waiver services, there are ways of getting it. You know, YAI has a healthcare program. You know, you can get therapy mm -hmm. through there and they take the Medicaid, you know, and all, but if you don't have it, you're holding your kid back and then you're going to have your child at home. And I don't know how long it's taking now <laughs> to get services. When I started out, sure. people were complaining about the six month wait. And that's all I waited Let me back tell in the you, day. I put Aiden on a wait list when he was three because he didn't qualify. When I found what out about the... He didn't qualify for okay, so Medicaid waiver services? N no, 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 wait. Okay. Let me backtrack. So what we're talking what we're talking about, comadres, is um, Medicaid waiver services, which is offered through the Office of People with Developmental mm. Disabilities. These are services that your child is entitled to. Your child is entitled to Medicaid because they have been diagnosed with a disability. And this is, I'm sorry, it's Even straight Medicaid, them, not a Medicaid managed care plan, which is different. Yeah. Yeah. So straight Medicaid, right? Through the straight Medicaid, you are entitled to a Medicaid service waiver, which entitles you to all kinds of services, which is which I have talked about on the program before. So, for example, um. Your child can be eligible for respite, for community habilitation, for um, it is going to camp this week. It's all covered by the Medicaid yeah. service yeah. coordination, mm -hmm. right? You get a care manager that is in charge of a budget that you, you know, have. And that person is in charge of getting supplemental services to help your child eventually become independent and be able to function in the community in a certain way. And then now I'm finding out through Mary that there's even more services that they're entitled to. So it is of the utmost importance. If your child does not have Medicaid, go get it. And it's not Medicaid with a plan. It's just straight Medicaid that you need mm -hmm. for your child. And even if you're a city worker like me, your child still is entitled to that. They can have the, the, the plan that you have for them with your um, job for the city or the state or, or the federal job that you have. Plus, the yes, because I've been in, I work private sector all my life and they're on my insurance mm -hmm. and my my employ my work insurance is primary and then the straight Medicaid is secondary, which means that I'm not limited to just Medicare only doctors. I can take them to any specialist that I want, but the Medicaid is there to supplement whatever my insurance doesn't cover. Also. More importantly, are the services, the services, the services, the services. You will not get anything. Supported employment is paid by Medicaid. Their job training, uh, Jordan, unfortunately, his store location is closing, supposedly end of year, beginning of NERCs. He works at Stop and Shop. Their location is closing. He'll go back to AHRC. The job, they it's their responsibility. Medicaid pays them. This is how these people get paid to help your child. He can go back yeah, for job training. He, they'll work on his resume. They'll help him look for work. That's all paid through Medicaid. You can't just go somewhere and say, my kid needs a job. It's not going to work that way. It's just not. And it also pays for stuff like um, the care manager also does all the legwork for you. I wouldn't even know where to begin to look for stuff services and also there's family reimbursement i still use it i still probably dylan clothes for school once those receipts come in she's like she's asking me already did you go school shopping did you get me the receipts where are the receipts i want to get them um, in because yeah, the budget you know, opens up july I, 1st and the sooner you get it in the budget the better and you don't get all of it back but if i spend 300 and they give me 150 oh i'm happy with that right something um and also you have so once you once you qualify for the the services of Medicaid service coordination, you have to look for a agency that you're satisfied with. It sounds like your agency is really on it. Not every every agency is like that. And like with everything with special education, you are entitled to change. And you don't have to give anybody an excuse about anything. They can't give you a hard time. You right. go ahead and you look 
for another agency right. that works with you and that is going to give you the services. Right. That you need. Like I when you're when you're approved for wa Medicaid waiver services, OPWDD will give you a list of agencies to contact. And then if you don't like them, you could switch the agency or if you don't like the care manager that you have, you speak to their supervisor. I've had care managers, well, I started back when it was MSC Medicare Service Coordination. So that goes way back. I, I go that. way back. And it's the mm -hmm. same concept. It's the same principle. If I didn't like the care manager, I didn't feel like they were following up or they weren't getting my, the information that I needed. I would speak to the supervisor. I'd be like, nothing personal, but I need somebody else. Switch it. And there's no questions asked. They don't give you our time or anything like that. They're like, okay, mm -hmm. we'll look for someone to take over the case. And then usually the supervisor will handle, will take care of you until they assign the case. So, uh, same thing with an IEP. Don't ever sign an IEP. Don't ever agree to anything. You don't have to. Yep. And even if you agree, you can always ask for a and meeting. And open it and up. And, and, uh, I've never had and a problem open opening up, up an IEP meeting. I hear some stories from people, but I, my personal experience, I've never had an issue. Um, but the more vocal and the more present you are at your child's school, the more you get. Mm -hmm. Because those are the... So, I can't show up all the time, but not I show up I'm all like, the time, I'm that mom. You're either getting a phone. I'm that mom that's emailing and emailing, calling and texting. Uh, well, all depending the time. on the situation, emailing, but I'm calling. Teachers always have my number. I have their number. I have the number to the principal. I have the number to the. I believe me, they know who I am. When they hear my kid's name, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, his mom is coming. Yep, you know it. That's it. Exactly. You, you have to make yourself known. <laughs> You know, you just have to make yourself known and they will pay attention to you. They will pay attention to you. I I told the comadres on the show that um, I am notorious. Like people know who I am regardless mm -hmm. of where I go. It's either OPWD, the people from OPWDD know who I am. The principal knows who I am. The, the, the IEP coordinator knows who I am. Um, the people at... Um, transportation opt mm -hmm. know who i am i'm sure that in my in aiden's file they have to have like problematic parent on there because yeah. i don't play that like you have to you are be not that about way. to right. treat my kid badly or not give them the services that they need because you're not doing your job if you don't like your job that is your problem but you Correct. need to do what i you treat need to do. it i like, treat it like if it's somebody no. who put their hands on my kid that's how i treat every situation mm -hmm. like oh you you did what like you're saying what did you not do for what happened? Oh no! You might as well put a hand on him because it's gonna—it's on. So that's another thing. The parents have to be not afraid to speak up. You know your child better than anybody. When your child is trans, especially when your child is transitioning from different schools because they age out of certain programs, go visit the programs. Yep. Go with your gut. Go with my gut has never steered me wrong, and I have luckily had both boys placed, always placed in very good programs and very good schools. Go with your gut. If you go in, you're not getting a right that's vibe. Funny. That mother, you know, that spidey sense starts tingling. The mother spidey sense. It, yep. It's not good. No es para ti. No es para tu muchacho. No lo ponga ahí. Whatever. They want to send them to Timbuktu. No, we're not doing that. I'll keep them all. You guys get me uh -huh. a teacher and a therapist to come to the house. Y'all don't want to fix it. De una vez me encontraron el They gave me the placement I wanted. You have to yeah. speak up. The same thing happened with. The same thing happened with Aiden. I was, um, he was transitioning from elementary to junior high school. I went to visit a school, which I'm not mm -hmm. going to say the name of the school, but it was here in the Heights. Um, it was a uh, district 75 location in, mm -hmm. in the area. Right. So I went to see the school. It was, um, I want to say Tuesday. Father's day was on Sunday. It was coming up on Sunday. It was 10 o'clock in the morning and they were doing arts and crafts for father's day. Listen, I'm a special education teacher. I don't play that stuff. Yes, we can do it at the end of the day. <laughs> and I work the 675. We are not using using instructional time to do arts and crafts and things. So for me, that I want my kids to have a good balance of socialization um, and career training and, like, you know, fun things, too, that was not going to work for me because I need it to be more heavy academic. You know what I'm saying? There's things that I want my kids to learn that i feel are important and if they're not taking care of those goals during the day at, on a tuesday at 10 a.m when father's day isn't till sunday like you know like for me that's a waste right. of instructional time like why am i sending my kids to school that's like sending them yeah, to a, a that's what i was gonna say it sounds like babysitting, the babysitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
just keeping them entertained and stuff like Thank that. You. But another thing, I don't know how to say. It. it doesn't get easier as they get older. The needs change. Um, the needs yeah. change because even though, let's say, I have one child who's more a little more high functioning than the other one, the needs are different, so the struggles are a little bit different. Um, and also, once they reach a certain age. Once they reach 18, there aren't a lot of programs for, I, and what I mean programs, I mean like extracurricular activities, other things that they can do after school or on the weekend, um, you know, on the, the, the support group um, that, uh, that we're on, you know, everybody posts about, oh, this for kids, that for kids, but it's kids. Once your child turns 18, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's another struggle that you go through because there's no, there's nothing for any any adult with disabilities any adult very few programs i know yai has a program and jordan tried it out they do like sad this was before covid i don't even know if they still have it anymore but they would get together on saturdays mm -hmm. and it was could be from 18 all the way up to 50 something and all different types of disabilities and that's a problem in the autism community because Jordan didn't feel comfortable because he didn't see anybody like him. When he was younger, or they were younger, there's activities, Saturday activities, sports, entertainment, whatever, geared to children within the autism community, and they can relate to each other. But when you yeah. group a bunch, of, which is a bunch of different disabilities, and we tried it for a couple of Saturdays, and he just wasn't happy. So really, that's that's mm -hmm. a problem in the autism society. It even autism, any disability. Once your child becomes eighteen, there's nothing. There's no sports for them. There's no league for them. There's there's nothing really out there, because we've been I we've been I've been looking for Jordan since he turned eighteen. Just some kind, and they there's just nothing, and it's been going on. This has been going on for decades. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm able to take, we, we, we go out. My kids are, are very, um, I don't have a problem going out with them. They behave and everything. And also what I tell parents of younger children who've been um, recently diagnosed, don't be afraid to go out with your child. Que se joda todo el mundo. How many kids do I go out and little kids are ha having a fit? I don't know why that kid is having a fit. That's not my problem. That's how, that's how children learn mm -hmm. to behave in society you have to take them out yeah. just okay you take them out and he has a meltdown or she has a meltdown you try to figure out well why are they having that meltdown and then okay the next outing okay now i know this is the trigger it, it's a slow process to learn what triggers your child and what doesn't you know but do yeah. not do not and avoid thing living life or having life or experiencing life for them also just because you're afraid that they're going to go out and make a scene. Let them make a scene. How many kids don't I go out and they're making a scene? And some kids, I can tell that they have nothing wrong with them. And they're just being, you know, screaming. Mary, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's why my kids, I'm able to go. We can go anywhere. I mean, we can fly on a plane without a problem. People are like, what do you, yeah. you can get out. I said, oh, they're the best to go traveling with. Are you kidding me? It just take it takes training though, because the thing is, like, I'm sure it wasn't like that when they were um, just, when they were like little, one of my first no, episodes. See, this is why when you brought up that every kid is different. My kids never had mm -hmm. an issue going out. I was ready for mm -hmm. it, like when when we first, you know, when, like when Dylan was little and 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 my daughter Angelica, they were little. I just had them too. We would go out everywhere. We go to the park. We get on a. I didn't have a car at the time. We get on a bus, two trains, whatever we needed to do. No issues. I mean, if they were tired and got a little bratty, but I, I was able to tell the difference between them being a child and them having a meltdown because of their diagnosis. That's the, that's the learning curve in the beginning. You have to differentiate when they're just being a child because they, they're children. They're going to mm -hmm. act like children. Or it's part of their diagnosis. They're having a sensory issue or they just don't like, they can't verbalize, they get frustrated because they can't verbalize that they don't like something or they're not happy. You have to, but even, you have mm -hmm. to keep, if, for parents who are having problems with those types of behaviors, keep trying. Eventually, they will. I mean, the only time I struggled was with the haircuts. Oh, my God. I could tell you. It would take three of us. 
to go to the barber shop. And let me tell you, I, yo soy Dominicana, I love my Dominican barbers because these are, these men are very patient, have been very patient with my kids when they were younger. I mean, it would take... I'm actually going to have an episode with them because I, I highlighted another barber who does like the same thing. Like he does like an event for kids with special needs. But I want to highlight people in our community that are, you know, Dominican and Latino that are taking yeah. care of our kids and like yeah. are learning. Because they, they don't they don't grow up no kids and, and it wasn't for the it most wasn't part, the you know what I'm saying? Go to, the, it's not like they know how to deal with kids on the spectrum. They were like, no te preocupes, I got him. No, no te preocupes, I got him, I got him. And they, you know, I'd be like, okay. But, you know, when they were little, it would take like me holding them. And then I would have, you know, either their father at the time would come or um, when they had respite at the time. Um, when they had respite at the time, it would be um, one holding one side, one holding the other. To the point now where they let themselves they they let themselves get shaped up, bonito, shape. So, like I was saying before, now you just have to keep trying. Even if, um, like in the beginning, like getting a haircut, simple thing as getting a haircut, it's difficult. I I, I used to take it used to be me and two other people, or I have to take one other person because. You know, when they were little that I can hold them down or whatever just to get some kind of a haircut. I mean, it took a few years, but now it's to the point where they, you know, Dylan, who doesn't really communicate well, he'll tell me, you know, time for a haircut. You know, his hair is long. He, he needs a shave. He goes like this. He needs a shave, you know, and stuff like that. And he likes going to the barber. You know, but in the beginning, with the, the meltdown, the screaming and the yelling, maybe you can't do a shape up, but, you know, they pass the machine real quick, just make them look decent and you out the door. We kept doing that on a regular basis until now it's to the point where they can go to any barber. But they do go to Dominican barbers because they're the, they were like, even when they started screaming, they're like, just hold them. I got you. You know, we'll cut, we'll cut his hair real quick. Don't worry. And now it's mm -hmm. to the point you don't give up, right? Don't give up. I, it's hard with the screaming and the yelling. And if you need to take an extra person to help you hold them down or whatever, just keep doing it. Keep doing I mean, I know kids who don't have any kind of disabilities or anything like that. And when their parents first started taking them to the barbershop, they did the same thing. So it's just, it's, yeah. it's not just to our, it's not, doesn't just apply to our kids. It applies to all children. So don't give up. Just deal with it. They're willing to deal. It. That's it. Eventually, they'll 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 give in. You, I've never had a problem. That's the only problem that I've had behavior wise. Them dealing with anything outside of the home. Um, they can. They love to go out to eat a restaurant, but always since they were little, it's just something that they like to do. Some kids can't tolerate that. They can't tolerate if a restaurant is too crowded or it's too noisy or some. I know some. Parents, they can't take their kids to the movies because they can't tolerate the loud speakers. And and I mean, now they have movies that are, you know, sensor, sensory friendly. That's what they're called, sensory friendly mm -hmm. movie showings. But um, you just have to see what works for your child or not. Some things you can work around, some don't. You know what? Oh, I don't want to get on a plane because they might have a meltdown. Well, have you ever gone to Florida and been on a plane? With the kids going, you know, crazy and they necessarily uh -huh. do not have, you know, something wrong with them. Yeah, not something wrong with them, but they don't have a disability. They don't have a sensory issue. They're just being children. And you, I mean, that's how our parents taught us. They taught us how we behave. When somebody comes in, you say hello, you go into somebody's house, tu saluda. It's the same thing. It's just that our kids uh -huh. may take it a step extra. Uh -huh. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I mean, my boys didn't say move. Nothing when we started this journey with them. I mean, absolutely nothing. And you would be like, oh, they don't talk. I mean, I have one who works part time now and you can have conversations with him and stuff like that. And, you know, and the other one, you he can't do that. But he came from a place where it was just point when he wanted something. And, I, you know, any other parent would be like, oh, my God, my kid is never going to talk. Not necessarily mm -hmm. true. Keep trying. Don't give up. The struggle never ends. It just changes depending on where they are age-wise. Um, yeah. You know, and for adults, once they graduate Board of Ed, the, there's a few options. Some kids are very high-functioning that they can go to. I heard you mention about college. Some kids are very high-functioning mm -hmm. 
that you don't even notice that they, nobody would know that they have, a, and they can go to college without um, any assistance. Um, like my son Jordan, they can do supported employment, but that's something, I don't know, their school was pretty good about it. Um, their, um, where in District 75 they were placed. I don't know about other schools in other boroughs if once, if they have like, um, they have different steps, they have different stages for depending on what, what stage they are. Like, um, my son Jordan in his District 75 here in Queens, he was on stage five, which means he could do project search, which his last year of school, I don't want to say high school because he was 20. Um, the last mm -hmm. year of school, um, he did an intern, his class did an internship at New York Presbyterian in Queens and they rotated just to give him a feel of what the job, what working would feel like. Um, some mm -hmm. kids, they, they can do employment, but, um, they need someone there guiding them all the time. That's a different stage. Um, Dylan, because he doesn't, my son doesn't talk because he doesn't want to talk. I'll be honest with you. He doesn't talk because he doesn't want to talk. He's lazy about it. Because um, if he gives you a one-word answer and I tell him, Dylan, I need a full sentence, then he gives me, Mommy, can I have this? I said, so why didn't you just don't tell me uh, banana? Uh, banana what? You know, he, he can do it. He just doesn't want to do it. My son's lazy for that. You know, he won't be able to hold a job. He can't go out into, um, he didn't qualify to be in a classroom um, where they go out in the community and do like work, do some work at a, to see a senior center or something like that uh, because of his language and his behavior. My son's a brat. I'm telling you that right now. He's a brat. He wants to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Um, it has nothing to do with the autism. That's just his character. That's just who he is. <laughs> That's just who he is. Um, so, you know, usually it's up to the school should have programs in there geared towards, especially for Aiden that he's starting now. They'll start evaluating him to see where they think he may fit. Like, do they see him capable of holding a job? So they'll put him in a program or work him towards getting to that point that once he graduates, he can go into supported employment. And that's so what and that's they, something that they do before do, they graduate. Like this year, Dylan, this is Dylan's last year. So I'm already going to start. They're going to start to, tra as soon as September starts, we're working on transition. That's the goal their last school year, transition. Because once they're in school till they're 21, there's really not much more they're going to learn. I'm going to be honest. There's not much more they're going to learn. It's getting them ready to move out of the board of ed world and into the real world. So, okay. uh, you know, it, 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 there should be a, tr every District 75 school, at a high school level should have a transition coordinator. Um, and you should reach, you don't have to wait for them to reach out to you. You can reach out to them and say, I know he doesn't graduate for another four or five years, but this is, everybody knows me as I plan five years ahead for my kids. Um, and, uh, you know, that. And all work towards getting, um, once they turn, um, I'm sorry, once they turn um, 17 or 17 and a half, you can start the paperwork for guardianship. Please, please, please do not wait to get guardianship. Do not wait till they're 25. So for the comadres that don't know what guardianship is, can you explain to okay, them what it is? Okay, guardianship is, okay, you know how um, your child is 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. They're considered minors. Legally, they're minors. When we turned 18, we're considered adults. If we got arrested, like, what was the what was the people always saying? Oh, you're 18, now you can get arrested and charged as an adult. That was the joke. Same thing for our kids. Yeah. Our kids are 18, even though they have a disability, a documented disability, they are considered legally adults. That means unless you have a guardianship in place, you cannot speak for them on behalf of Social Security. You cannot speak on behalf of them for medical reasons. Um, it's it's the same way if, um, let's say, God forbid, I don't know, my mother, my one of my brothers, they can't take care of themselves anymore. They can't make decisions for themselves anymore that we don't feel that they're capable. I can go file for guardianship. I suggest no one do it on their own. It's a very complicated process. The courts do not make it easy. It's not something, it's a lot of paperwork. 
I had an attorney involved. Um, he's out in Long Island. He does a lot of this work. He has a daughter with special needs. So um, mm. I did all of that with him. It, it, you know, and it was worth it because he went through all the back and forth, going to court, figuring out what was going on. You need that. I've never ran into an instance before they approved the guardianship um, where a doctor or if I took them somewhere, they wouldn't let me speak on their behalf. But you never know. God forbid. So I want to, yeah, I want to chime in with that. Um, I know of a case of a mom of a, of a girl with autism who they will not let the mom put her on birth control nor will they let the mom put an IUD because she doesn't have the guardianship and she's had because she doesn't have the guardianship and she's 21 and she has already had two children who the mom is now responsible for in addition to her daughter oh, wow okay so the girl can't advocate for herself and say yes I want this right but now the mom can't say anything either. So please don't put yourself in that situation. Not saying that at all of our, any of our kids are over the comadres in the program are like that. But you never know. Like our kids are actually, kids with disabilities are highly sexual beings. And, and especially because they don't have like the hangups that everybody right. else has. So, you know, hedging against that in the future, definitely go right. for the guardianship. But also, God forbid, they're hospitalized. And... Uh, let's say they need some kind of you know approval for a procedure. You go ask Dylan something, he may say yes, he may say no, but he doesn't know what he's mm -hmm. answering. Even Jordan, yep. who's fully verbal, he still, when people ask him questions, you see him like kind of look at me to see if he can get for me to answer because he's not really sure, but he, he doesn't say that he's not sure. So God forbid he mm -hmm. ends up in the hospital and you know, they, they, they ask him, oh, we want to do this to you. And he's like, yeah, okay. He doesn't know. He doesn't understand what he's saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To. And then by the time I get to the hospital, it'll be like, oh, we did. But why did you do that? You know, and the guardianship, yeah. once you're granted the guardianship, you keep the original in a safe place. You make tons of copies. I carry it with me everywhere. Like if we're going to go, uh, my daughter lives upstate. We go to Albany to visit her. I carry it with me. God forbid. I get on a plane. I carry it with me. I have it tacked up right in my kitchen. God forbid there's an emergency. You, owe, you know, mm -hmm. like um, like his work knows I'm his legal guard. Even his job. They call me. They speak to him just because he has a right to hear what they have to say. But they'll call me and tell me, mm -hmm. oh, this is going on. They're closing the store. We're having a meeting. Because I'm his legal guardian and they're aware of it. But it's really to protect your mm -hmm. child from these kind of things that God forbid, like a medical thing. Um, you cannot speak on their behalf when you apply for SSI. Once I, I was only able to apply for SSI when they turned 18 because of my employment. So if you work, you may, you can go to social security and find out if your child is eligible for SSI before they're 18, nine times out of 10, even with the little bit of money, some people make, they still can't get SSI for their kids. So I had to wait till I was 18. For me to become the representative payee, which means in Social Security, I make the phone calls. I go to the meetings at Social Security. Jordan or Dylan do, do not need to be there. The only way I could be their representative, I have to give them a copy of the guardianship. Because that's the first thing they have. Do you have the guardianship? So, uh. if bef I, bef while I was getting him in SSI and working on his guardianship, because I was doing it simultaneously... I couldn't be part of the meeting. If I came to a meeting it, at the office, now they don't do that in the offices, but he, I would prep him and tell him, I need my mom to speak for me. So when we would get there and sit down okay. and he would say, excuse me, I need my mom to speak for me. And they said, okay, he gave permission. But what if your child mm -hmm. can't, Dil Jordan, Dylan can't tell them, oh, my mom needs to speak for me. So with like mm -hmm. Dylan, since he was, he's considered nonverbal, I got the guardianship first and waited to get the SSI because really, honestly, they backdate it. Like if you start a couple. When, when did you start the guardianship process? 17 like what and age half. were they? In New York, you could start the process at 17 and a half in New York. And how Depends long does it on take? The court. Jordan's delayed, was delayed two years because of a problem at Queens Court. 
Queen Surrogate Court. There was an internal guess. problem. Dylan, less, Dylan I'm was thinking less, about my divorce. My divorce took like two years. I can imagine how Dylan's long that would take. Two, Jordan's took two years because it was a problem within, I'll be honest, because my lawyer told me. At the time, there was a problem with someone who was handling the paperwork in the Queens County uh, Surrogates Court. And they were delaying. He mm -hmm. said all his cases that were from Queens were all delayed. All, all delayed because this person was messing up the paperwork. This person eventually did get fired. And was holding up every... People were waiting like left... Yeah. With Dylan, I think under a year. Mm -hmm. Under a year. Okay. But I did. Right, it's it's always good to I know. People like, oh, shop around. There are always. I'm. This is why I said you get a lot of information from your child's school district seventy five. They're always having workshops. When they start having workshops about um, transition, about guardianship, make it a point to attend. The attorneys who run the programs or whoever they'll give out resources, attorneys to speak to. Uh, and well, that's how I found my attorney. I went to a um, skip of New York, which I don't even know if they're still around. They had a work. Um, that's where yeah. I had my um, Medicaid uh, when I had when it was MSCs. That's where we were. And they had a workshop on that. And I attended that. And I think Jordan was 12. So I had the attorney and I did, I said, I can't wait six years. I can't, I can't even start it. That's what I'm saying. It's good to mm -hmm. the moms with the young kids recently diagnosed. Doesn't matter how old you don't have to wait for them to be a certain age to get the information. The a lot of the information doesn't change. It hasn't changed. Maybe the process to get all waiver services has changed since I did it. It seems to be a little bit more complicated. They want a lot more stuff than before. Um, but mm -hmm. it's pretty much all the same. That's why I say please if you can go to the, make make the time to attend these different workshops. If it's, it's something that interests that you, it, you it piques your interest, but especially transition, anything about SSI, anything about guardianships, please, please attend. That's where you get your information. I would have never gotten it. I would have never known anything about anything if it wasn't for the school, you know, putting out the information. I don't know about District 75 schools in other boroughs, but the ones in Queens are pretty good about putting out that information to the parents. Uh, and one thing I do want to talk about um, is that there is, for the parents that have kids in um, District 75, there is an app called Remind. So the Remind app, District 75 is specifically using it to send oh. out information. So all those flyers and all those, um, you know, notices that you, the kids get in a backpack from District 75 are going to be put on the Remind app. Remind so app. just join, ask your school. And so first time I heard yeah, it, because, I'll, I'll um, put the link in the show notes. Um, uh, Dylan and Jordan's school in District 75 in Queens was uh, the 721 schools. And they use an app, the Blooms, mm -hmm. Blooms app. Blooms. And they put everything mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. So Okay. I mean, every school is different, but I know for sure District 75, at least here in Manhattan, Mind up, they're okay. using the Remind app because I know I have, I have a, I have a app, like I have a, like a, I guess a, a group for the t the kids in his school, and then I have a separate group for District oh, 75. Okay, right. So all the stuff about graduation and all that stuff, I was re receiving it through there. But also, it's like District 75 is having a meeting about such and such. And it gives you a notification oh, okay. straight to Yeah, that's phone. great. Yeah, everybody should get whatever whatever app the school's offering or you hear about, download it and use it. Because I always get notifications. Yeah, and they're usually free. And if you need a tutorial about how to install it, the, reach out to the school. Yeah, because that's I know for, there my, for. for Jordan and Dylan, Bloom, the Blooms app, um, they had to give us like a lot, like I can log in and see like things for, for specifically his school and then they'll post like, mm -hmm. I think there's a, a, a webinar coming up on, um, ACA is having a, uh, a benefits and entitlements family forum and you can register for that. It mm -hmm. talks about a lot of stuff, but there's some stuff there that I'm, I'm interested in learning. Um, so I, you know, I'm, it's next mm -hmm. week, so I'm going to register, but that's how I found out. I mean. I'm part of ACA. That's where they, their care manager is. They had sent me an email, but I knew that I was mm -hmm. going to see it on the school app because they, they post everything that they hear from everywhere and they just post it. So the parents Got have it. it there. And if anybody has any questions, um, our parent coordinator at our school is really good. You know, reach out to the parent coordinator in the schools. 
Um, they're, they work closely with um, every all these resources that are out there. They supposedly have all these resources. They should. Um, because they work yeah. hand in hand with the transition coordinator. You'd be surprised how much information a transition coordinator has about resources when your child is not even transitioning yet. They have a, at least that's what I've yeah. learned in their school. They seem to have a lot of information. Yeah, they're already prepping me to get Aiden a job during the school year as soon as they, he turns 14. They're like, oh, he needs his working papers. You need to take this to the pediatrician. And I'm like, he's not ready yes, to have is. a job yes, yet. <laughs> No, no, he is, but I'm just like, I was just like, I'm not ready. Because I did forget that Jordan did do summer youth. And you know when he where he did summer youth? In the school. He did summer youth in the school. Mm, okay. They did summer, because I don't know if it's because the school was a location for summer. I don't know how it worked out, but his summer youth was in school. Yeah. That's awesome. Let me tell you, at Aiden's graduation, there was one kid that actually they put him to work with the junior high school kids. He was because they had a combined because it has a high school mm -hmm. and a, um and a junior high school together, but they're in two different sites. But they did the graduation together. And one of the kids that graduated, which I was like really proud of him, he was working with all the junior high school kids. So he was working as a basically like a counselor, as, not a counselor counselor, but he was working helping them like with peer mediation how to talk to each other to resolve problems and stuff like that so he was getting training through the school but he was doing like i guess they have a certain amount of hours that they need to do to be able to graduate so he was doing right. his hours doing that and helping the people in the in the dean's office so you know that's something that's another option you know the kids can work another thing aiden's hara that he had when he was five was actually a person that graduated from district 75 and he was now working as an assistant teacher in the building so you know that that's another another thing like you know uh, depending on the skills that your child has they're definitely going to find if, something if they for feel, them, if know? that's the route the thing is that we need to be open the route for them yes yeah and you have to be mm -hmm. willing to let go as you as long as you're open, open. And I love, yes, I love that you're saying that because the thing is, like, Aiden goes to camp, right? There, it's a sleepaway camp. Yeah, There's I some can't parents do that. Are like, yeah, I do you that. let your child go. Let me tell you, Aiden has been going since he was eight years old. He goes every summer, at least for a week, and then sometimes he he's able to get into a second session. And he has such a good time to the point that we get on the line, and he does the weekend stuff too because they have weekend respite during the year so like when there's like breaks they'll do like three to four days or two days whatever he gets on the line he lets go of my hand he grabs his little suitcase and he marches up to the front of the bus says hi to everybody and sits his little butt down he's like bye mom see you when i get back and he's gone oh my god he was not <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what i'm saying but like at the imagine eight and eight years old on the line of course, the thing is that the camp that he goes to, um, shout out to Rising Treetops, the camp he goes to, they they group them by age. Because this camp is like, it does day community, it, it does day have services too for like adults with autism and also other people with other disabilities. But they have specific sessions for people with autism and then for specific sessions for younger kids with autism. They don't do like, for like older people with little kids. And then, and the way that they have them, cause I went, <laughs> that's another thing I told you. I don't play, right. like I don't uh, just let him go, go, whatever. I went and I saw what it's like, how it is, who's working there. I asked all the questions and basically it's like one-to-one -one ratio, a staff with a kid 24 seven, right? Um, The staff are constantly supervising, the kids are, you know, they're doing all these extracurricular activities, they're getting, exposed to different things because we have inner city kids like our kids don't get to see what a farm looks like their kids don't get to do these things unless we take them ourselves but then it's also nice that they have the camp experience right, that right. other they kids in the suburbs have you know so it, it like I, I i really enjoy the program and, and well, he has a really good time he he's you, made a lot i of couldn't friends. do that i try but i forgot on what waiting <laughs> some of them there's a waiting list forever like you. No, you should try. 
If you have you have Medicaid service coordination, I'll send you the link of the camp. And you yeah, can even I check out their Instagram. Their Instagram is great. Maybe too. be able to go is Jordan because he's fully verbal. Dylan, the problem with Dylan is it takes him a long time to adjust to new things like a new person or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, uh, oh, God, even like, you know, he, when he transitioned into high school, you know, we're three years in and he was, it took two years for him to really feel comfortable where he was at. So he's not good with that. And when he has a meltdown and an outburst, he really goes out there. So I wouldn't think it'd be safe for him. Yeah. But like, right. And he can't no, yeah, definitely like, like things are going on or how he feels about something or whatever. But like Jordan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you check it out with Jordan and see if you like it. And then if you guys take a trip to go, because oh, okay. it's in South Jersey, it's not far. Um, if you take a trip to go see it and, you know, and, and Jordan likes it or, or, or he likes it, like, yeah. you know, it's, it's worth a try. You know, if he's having a hard time, you can always go and pick right, him up. It's right. not, that's not a big deal. Like, and the, 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 what I love about them is that they're very communicative. Like, they will let you know. Um, he actually, the last time he was there, I was in Jamaica and he was at the camp and, um, he accidentally oh, I dialed think you said it in the, in your last so, podcast that he was, uh, yeah, I was. Yeah. And, 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 but the good thing is that they were able to go and it wasn't, Como te digo, it, it wasn't like it wasn't like they were handling the situation like like reporting to the scene to like take care of like tackle somebody whatever. It was like very calm. Like, they were concerned obviously because they wanted to make sure he was safe, but it wasn't like a, a situation where I felt like I need to get on a plane to like right. get to Jersey like right now, you know. So so it's important it's important to let them try because the thing is like I at first I was like oh god I don't know. So, you know, the fear was holding me back. But, like, now that I see that he's able to do it, um, right. it, it makes me feel better. Right. About and he is he's fully like. verbal? Yesterday, he he's went every day. Go ahead. Um, I want to say kind of limited because the thing is with him, he won't initiate a conversation with you. But if you ask him a question, okay. he'll respond. But he'll, he, he's very, um, okay, so he's, he's very, it depends if he's motivated. If he's motivated, he'll ask. Like, my thing about Dylan, but he's not, if he's yeah, not interested, he won't like really. If something happens, he wouldn't be able to tell me. It's the same situation when you were having the podcast with busing. I have a child that if something really, if something is happening mm -hmm. on the bus and they're telling me one thing, he can't come back to me and say, Mommy, no, that's not what really happened. This is what happened. Like, Jordan, yeah, I can do that, but he can't. So, Certain situations I wouldn't put him in because I'm afraid, you know, he won't know how to express himself. And if he gets upset or anything, it's just babble, you know, and he, and he's big. Mm -hmm. Not that he okay. gets aggressive with me, porque él sabe. but, um, you know, he has mm -hmm. had episodes where he's not an aggressive person, but he's been, he's gone there. He's gone there in school. It doesn't happen often. Like they don't feel like he needs to be labeled as someone who's violent or self-injuring or yeah that needs to be violent, you know, yeah. he's, a heart, he's a danger to other people or anything like that but he has a bien fuerte. their boys because oh, at the end of the day their boys regardless if they have oh no 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 but no, no i'm not saying it's just boys but i'm just saying they're they're Why? young men they're young men and the thing is the change in oh, hormones yeah, teenagers, they get a little bit like, like difficult but with him you know more that's just like I said. That's el carácter. That's who he is. He's just very strong willed, mm -hmm. and you know, and that's what he. Lo thinks. Que dice, I don't know why he thinks he that because he. You know, they call me the Dylan <laughs> Whisperer. Whenever he's having a major meltdown in school, um, he goes to an after school program. I think in the eleven years or twelve years that he's been there, he's had two meltdowns where they said you need to come get him, and I walk in y todas las lágrimas se up. There's no more screaming. There's no more yelling. There's no more throwing on the floor, trying to run over here. I'm like, what's? The, I just go right oh up to him. God. My son is five eight. I'm four eleven. He's two twelve. I'm like one eighty. And I look at him and I said, uh huh. And what are we doing? I said, really? This is. And he just. And they're like, oh my god. They're like fast. They're like, oh my god. Every time we see it, we just still can't believe it. <laughs> it's like you, he sees you, and it's like, oh my god, mommy. There's been situations. There's there's been situations that they. 
they call me. They call me on the phone. Oh and no, I'll, they and I'll they on the phone with him. him when they say when they say they and he hears them say in his tantrum, oh, "We're gonna call his mom." And he gets even worse. But, no, mommy, no, mommy, no, mommy. And I'm like, no. And I and I tell people, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh my god, why? I said, you know why? I said because growing up, I had neighbors and they had a son who I'm not sure what his diagnosis was, but. The mother, she was a big woman. She must have been like six feet. When her son got older, she could not handle him. And I, and this was before I even had children. Mm. And I said, I would not, you know, you know, grand, abuelos are going to be abuelos. They're like, I just, have, you know, those kids are like that. No te preocupes. I said, oh, no, no. I said, you see how big I am? I said, I need to be able to live with my no. son because the last thing that I want to do, which there's nothing wrong with it. Me having to put my son in a group home because he cannot live with me because I cannot handle him, you know, and, you know, and also that is also another option when they graduate, depending on, for example, Jordan has two ex-classmates who worked school with him and they actually work in the same, ended up working in the same supermarket and they eventually decided that they mm -hmm. wanted okay. to not live with mom and dad and they happen, they happen to be twin brothers, and both twin brothers are on the spectrum. And they work with Jordan, and Jordan told me, he says, oh, you know they moved to Brooklyn? And I said, oh, the whole family moved to Brooklyn? He said, no, just Leo and Vlad. I said, excuse me? I said, move, move where? And he says, they live in a group. She, he's like, remember? Because I, I took him to a transition meeting where they had a video about services or whatever. He says, remember when we saw the video when I was graduating? They were talking mm -hmm. about how you could live in a home and... I said, yeah. And he was like, yeah, that's what they did. Social Security and Medicaid pay for that. They're working, but they're still, yeah. because they wanted to live independently, you know? And so that's I wanna, not an I, option for me. Go ahead. I always say it's not an option for me. I've asked Jordan, "Do you, is that something you want to look into? Girl. And I, I'm in my head going, and he was like, no. He looks at me funny and I said, I'm not trying to get rid of you because he gave me a look like, are you trying to get rid of me? And I'm like, uh, I'm like, like no. You want to get rid of me? No, now oh, that you no. actually know people who have done this, do you want to revisit the idea? And he was like, no, I'm fine living at home. I said, okay. But for some parents, that's the option that, that's the, that is another option after they graduate whether they're going to live at home because they ask you this every year is the plan is that they're going to live with you at home is the plan is that you want them to go to live in a group home and then i mean i, I haven't gone that path so i'm not really familiar with it but it is an option um it's not an option for me yeah at the moment i'm still alive viviendo coleando. yeah um you know you yeah. do have to think about and it's it's hard because you think about it from the moment you get the diagnosis i'm not going to live forever and you really really at some point need to sit down and have that hard conversation with yourself and decide what's going to happen when you're not around whether you die of old age you yep. die unexpectedly you get sick unexpectedly and you don't get better you know you just don't know you know, some people have a plan, you know, that yeah. this is, and this is another thing that's important about guardianship. Um, I have guardianship of the boys plus their father. We're obviously, we're not together. Um, but eventually, uh, my daughter doesn't want to become responsible for her brothers. That's a personal choice. That's a story in and of itself. Um, she told me that she doesn't want to. Um, mm -hmm. Because when you go through the guardianship process, if there is an adult sibling in the adult sibling, they have a right to become a guardian. And if they don't want to be a guardian, they have to sign a paper, a legal document that's part of the guardianship uh, package, um, waiving their rights to guardianship of their mm -hmm. younger siblings. So, um, you know, me and him are having, I'm, I'm 52. He's going to be 50 soon. So we're starting to have the talk about who are we going to add on to the guardianship? Because our, you know, you have to sit down and make the hard plan. Do you have someone who can take them when you're not around? Who's going to be responsible enough to do that? And if you don't put them on the guardianship, 
God forbid something happens to you, they can't take over. They can't go to Social Security and say, look, I'm on the guardianship. This is a death certificate. This guardian died. I'm going to be the representative pay. It's very important, but it's a hard conversation to have. Mm -hmm. And we're already having that conversation about who we are going to put on the guardianship because we don't put our we don't put our parents in homes. We don't put our sick kids in homes. We, it's not it's homes. not our culture to do that. I mean, we don't put our parents in homes. We'll get a home health aid and have them come to the house. Like we don't put our, our our parents in senior living or anything like that. It's just part of the culture, and it, it's not something that I want. It is a backup in the event of neither one of us, or there's nobody around that. You know, I have it in their life plan. When you when you have a care manager and your kids turn a certain age, they get a, they start having life. I think it's eighteen. They have a life plan, even though they're in school. So, well, let's say they're in school mm -hmm. still, they'll have the life plan and the IEP. The life in the life. Yeah, they have the life plan before before they turn eighteen. It's as soon as you the start life plan, with the though, care manager, they. Different. It's called something. I forgot what it's called. Oh. But it's not a life. A life plan is a little different. Mm, I thought it was. I don't think so. I'll, I'll look it up. up I'll look it up, comadres, and I'll put it in the um, notes and and, it a life and life the life difference. Between, so Jordan started eighteen. You know what it is? No, they, you know they, what it they've is? been calling when it a lifetime meeting. Eighteen, it's an ISP. ISP. I S is in Sam P. I don't know if with the chair it changed to ACA that they they're calling it something different, but the 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 coordinator always calls me and she's like, oh, oh we're because gonna that's what they were calling it. Meeting. But it, I feel like the stuff I feel like the stuff that you Way guys discuss when they turn eighteen school, is different than like different, now. Right, For example, exactly it's like even, though, if, yeah. even if they're eighteen and still in school, mm -hmm. the goals are different. So you know, I I I have it. Well, when I have my next life plan meeting, we're going to put in there, God forbid, they don't have a guardianship at some point, a guardian at some point. I, I'm mm -hmm. Because they told me I could put it in the life plan that if they need to be put in a group home, that they're put in a group home together. I don't want the brothers separated. Uh, just because Jordan understands Dylan. Yeah, you know, of course. Hopefully I can live till 90. Yeah. But, you know, they... they they understand each other, so at least I don't want the siblings separated. And they told me you could put that in the life plan that you don't want the siblings separated. That's important. And the reasons why. And hopefully, you know, I mean, yeah, but okay, that's another option. And some people go that route. They do put their kids in group home, but it depends. Everybody's situation is different. Every um, situation is different. Uh, so, so when Aiden first got diagnosed, uh, I had a friend that I used to go to. Um, when I was doing the master's program to be a teacher, she was telling about me about one of her teacher friends from the school because she worked in District 75 in the Bronx. And um, she was telling me about one of her teacher friends that has a child with autism that was older. And she actually had to put him in a group home because she couldn't handle the behavior and everything. So um, the way she set it up, she would go on weekends to visit him. And... Um, that was her choice. Every you know? situation is different. Right. But every, like, whatever choice you make, that's fine. Every situation is different, you know? Not everybody has the mental capacity to deal with a person with special needs, especially when it's something that the person can get violent or have outbursts that are physical, Um, you know, that, and that's everybody's choice. But it's always good to... Okay, now yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, that's every, it's the same way as people who medicate their kids and people who don't medicate their kids and and, it's the, and, it's, and, and it's all I, I mean my story is this when when i started out with jordan and dylan and there are medications now and they're probably going to be on these medications for the rest of their life but when they first got the mm -hmm. diagnosis we didn't go that route it wasn't yeah. a route and I, I thankfully they they they're under the treatment of a neurologist and their neurologist doesn't believe in I don't believe it in either. Didn't go. Right. Um, what I wanted to say real quick about medication. Um, my personal story. Um, both boys are are di on different medications. I didn't medicate them once they were diagnosed. I mean, they were both diagnosed around two and a half, three. Uh, well, Jordan was diagnosed a little bit later. Jordan was diagnosed um, when he was in sixth grade because Jordan was born with a hearing loss. So they attributed most of his delays to uh, the hearing loss, and so did I. 
Um, and um, I, it was difficult until he was in sixth grade because I kept switching him from different schools. He was not in a District 75 school, but the mm -hmm. special ed settings were just not working for him. So, you know, I would spend all the time switching him until um, something happened in sixth grade. And the psychologist said, oh, and Jordan, Dylan was already diagnosed. He said, oh, are, would you be okay if I evaluate Jordan for autism? I said, go right ahead. His brother's on the spectrum. I said, if, it, if anything that I can get him into a District 75, please, you know? And he says, mm -hmm. he says, yeah, I see the traits. He says, but I think they would just, he was, he was never diagnosed early enough because he had the hearing loss. So the mm -hmm. hearing loss is just attributed there. Everything was attributed to his speech and everything else to the hearing loss, which makes sense. It does make sense. I don't blame anybody. Mm -hmm. It does make sense. So um, Jordan got so Jordan got medicated a little bit later on, but Dylan, um, when he was like um, in kindergarten, I got to the point where they were calling me every day, and I would leave work to pick him up because my poor child was spending the whole day in a corner dealing with all these behaviors, and somebody a para would just stay with him all day just to keep him calm. Right. And I told you know we tried everything behavior modification, and I. And then I spoke to the doctor. I said, literally, this is what's happening. And he's like, well, let's, we're going to have to start. He says, well, how do you feel about, I said, I have to do something because he's not going to, I can't have my son grow up living life balled up in a corner. He's not learning. Yeah. You know, he's not doing anything. He might learn, you know, he might be okay for an hour. And then the rest of the day he's done. I said, yeah. I can't. So, you know, it's my choice. Um, yeah. And the medication doesn't. Cure girl okay so the so the met you, you know said, i i, I yeah. never because I, I i know of through this journey i've met especially like dylan's after school whatever you know and other parents that i've met you know medication is like any medication let's say you're depressed or you have anxiety like my kids take for example medication for anxiety that's one of the medications that they take it doesn't cure the anxiety it helps them cope with it better Yes. And, you know, it's the same thing. It's like, um, you know, like if you could be on an anxiety medication, I could be on anxiety medication, but if I don't put, that's just to help me because whatever I'm doing is not, is not enough. Yeah. And also we have to realize that autism is a neurological disorder. Yeah. The brain is very complicated and intricate. I'm, I'm not the, giving my kids medication. You know, it's not like before when we were growing up, somebody had a, uh, an issue and they gave a medication. If I buy bulb or drool, it, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that. Same thing. My both my boys take ADD medication because ch children and adults are autism are little. You know, attention deficit. Their the focus is mm -hmm. all really off. It doesn't mm -hmm. cure it, but it helps them because. They're frustrated because they're trying to focus and they just can't, and that's very frustrating. And it yep. and that the frustration brings out other behaviors. So I'm not saying that everybody should medicate their child, but don't feel stigmatized yeah. if you decide to medicate your child. And the only one who knows that you're medicating your child is you. Exactly. And, Nobody and needs to know that they're on medication. To, and you, that's something that you discuss with your doctor, the specialist who's taking care of your child. Don't let somebody in a school. Or what I think a para made the mistake one time in an IEP meeting, and I was like, she must not know me, because as I turned around, I said, she does not know me. She said, oh, why don't you put on my medication? And I, the teacher was like, you need to leave right now. And I looked at the teacher and I said, she doesn't know me, right? She's new. And he's like, yeah, she's new. I said, she doesn't know me, right? I said, it's none of her business. And she got. A, I, I spoke to the vice principal. We, and, you know, she got reprimanded for that. She wasn't allowed to sit into the IEP meeting. I said, I've never had any anybody in school tell me that I should medicate my child. Are you kidding me? First of all, that's illegal, number one. Number two, that's she's why not a the doctor. Teacher asked she's not a leave. neurologist. She's everybody not a just stood quiet because they knew me. And I was. Just, I looked at the teacher and I said, she doesn't know me. Even, even me. I'm an autism mom, right? And I have kids that are, you know may need to be on medication but the thing is with our community it's so stigmatized that i would never I ever have, ever I, but that's like me telling another parent how to take how how you should be parenting your child i, I would like would. if they I have concerns no like, if they have concerns i bring it i like i put it back on them i'm like have you spoken to your pediatrician about that have you spoken to the specialist that's dealing with your child about right that? 
You know, I'm not going to put myself out there in, in a situation where I could get sued. No. That kid right there, the one that's in the room playing all his video games and stuff, that's my priority. This job is a job. I'm not losing my job or getting uh, uh, something in my file because I spoke out of turn or I made a suggestion that was inappropriate. Right. So definitely, right. But if somebody says something that makes you feel uncomfortable, right. definitely but bring it up to the supervisor. But if you do see behaviors okay. with your child, if your child is not under the care of a, of a specialist and the pediatrician, mention it to the pediatrician. Maybe yes. it's time to go because once the boy, once since uh, Dylan was the first one diagnosed, my doctor was their pediatrician was the one who sent me to early intervention with Jordan because he wasn't talking and I was like, oh, I spoke late. My mother says we all spoke late. You know that's how we grew up. I have lot of day, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, and he was like, no, just call. He says it's free. I said I'm not worried if it's free or not. I just, you know, my mother said there was always a history of us speaking late. We, I'm the oldest of six. I said, she said we all spoke mm -hmm. late. And he's like, but it doesn't hurt. And, you know, come to find out, especially with Dylan, you know, Jordan, they just didn't do the autism. He just, he did get early. Thank God he was, he did get early intervention. Because of the speech Because of the speech delay, delay, speech delay he wasn't later. speaking, mm -hmm. and because of the hearing loss. Um, mm -hmm. He was born with a hearing loss on his left side. He hears fine because he was born that way. His right ear is fine. Mm -hmm. It's just that he has that hearing loss, which and but thank thankfully he got the early intervention at three. And with Dylan, it was just I, you know, when he wasn't talking, I, I told the doctor, I said, "Is the number still the same? I'm gonna call and have him, you know." And then he was like, "Yeah." With Jordan, he didn't refer me to a specialist, but with Dylan, he says, "You know what? Let me refer you to this neurologist." And he's pretty no well known in the autism community because when I throw his name out there, his name is Doctor Rami Grossman. He's out in New Hyde Park. Um, mm. and he's very good, very, very, very good. Um, I've referred a lot of parents to him. Um, you know, he was like, I'm gonna refer you to a neurologist because this is not something for me to, I don't feel that that's something that I need to deal with. Let me refer you to this doctor and let him do whatever he needs to do test, questionnaire, mm -hmm. whatever. And we've yes. been with the same doctor for uh, Jordan's what, Dylan's 20. 17 years 18 years yeah and he'll see them even as adults you know because he's licensed yeah. he's licensed also for adult neurology like he even told me he said like, you want me to give you something for your anxiety i was like no <laughs> i'm fine he says you know i'm licensed to treat adults i just specialize more with kids and i said Yo, I, yeah, yeah no, yeah. that's okay <laughs> you know so let's let's change gears okay. a little bit so tell me about your life now that the boys are bigger i know you said that it doesn't get easier. You basically, it's it. They have different needs. But what about you as a woman, not just a mom? Like, what what do you plan on doing now that the boys are not? Older uh, my life and hasn't changed. My life hasn't changed as a woman. Um, I was in a relationship for about seven years with someone that I knew for a very very long time. It didn't work out, and okay. I think it hurt my it hurt my boys more than it hurt me. Because and mm -hmm. that's where my hurt came from because it was un it was uh, unexpected. The breakup was mm -hmm. really unexpected, and um, they got close to him like to the point where Dylan still calls him daddy. And j it's just because their father is around, but not around like he should be, and especially since yeah. he has his own family, um, he doesn't. Um, I don't push it. You know, I ain't gonna push nobody. You don't. You see your kids. I, I'm, I'm not one of those mothers like, oh, side. you're not gonna see your kid. No, 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 no. But you know, it, I I told myself I would never put my kids in that situation again. Cause it's okay. been, it'll be four years in September, and they're still mm -hmm. hurt by it. They still miss him because his relate the bond that they created was. Because they didn't have their father, so they Very had a real strong, strong yeah. bond, and I and, and it still to this day hurts them. So the podcast that is airing right before this episode airs, um, I talked to a woman who has autism. And, she um, has autism. She explained she okay. has autism. So she explained to me the way that they love is that they will love really hard and really strong. It takes them a while, right, to love the person, but when they do love. It just takes them a really long time to like let it go. 
and when they hurt they hurt like that too which made me like really fearful because i'm just like oh no like she's like she the, the way she falls in love is like kind of like a cartoon not a cartoon character it's like a romantic La comedy novela. and it's very over the top <laughs> yeah like a novella but then like the breakup is the same so i'm just like i just me like what am i gonna do but to i don't think it, but that? i think that's a personality thing because i love i love hard so yeah but this was the first relationship that i had out no it's the first relationship that i brought home like once i spoke mm -hmm. with their father ended up ending you know i did go mm -hmm. out i did but i never brought anybody home like it wasn't like it was always that rule growing up you know de la calle de la calle, yeah, like when me. they're good enough you bring them home when it's said you you bring them home i still live by that yeah. And I don't, I, I was never, I, some people do it, it's okay. I'm not comfortable with parading different men in front of my children. Um, I agree with it, that. It's just, it's, it's, I, I, I don't know. I, I just can't do That's it. That's all on people's Right, it's, I don't have anybody. Right, but I'm not the type. And easy, but I know people, every time they have a new book. I'm not the type to be bringing I every, can. you know, like it, it, Mo Harry around my kid. No. You know, it, 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 Joe Perencejo, no, no. I'm not bringing those kids. So, those, so unless I know that that person is trustworthy and that this is going to be a long-term thing, that this person is going to be in my child's life, I'm not putting him through that. Why? Right. So, and the fact that I was able to have another re uh, serious relationship after their fathers, because I started a relationship with someone that I've known since I was 18. Yeah, so it was a, a friend. Right. Friend like, we thing. knew each other. We lost touch. We reconnected. Pasó lo que pasó. And, you know, whatever. And, you know, I did it. Like I said, the breakup was unforeseen. So, mm -hmm. even and, the, and it's tough for them still because he's the one who takes them to the barbershop. He's the one who takes them for a haircut. They don't want anybody else to take them for a haircut. They don't know how anybody else to take Like, to them, that's it. But the... But tampoco, I'm sure you're not the type of person that you're like, oh, it's over. You can't see my kids well, or nothing like that. But you're, are you okay with them having a relationship with him? Even yes, if it's even not though like it's a, a little, kind of fatherly? Even though now it's, now it's not, he's not making the time to see him, them as much as he did before. And I can see that they mm -hmm. sense that. I don't bring it up to them because it's a tough mm -hmm. subject, um, especially with Jordan, because he's probably the only one I can have a real conversation about. But there have been mm -hmm. times when he's come over and Dylan, he's Dylan's the one who's really close with him. Like, you know, Dylan's not mm -hmm. lovey-dovey with anybody, but with him he is. And yeah. there are times when he comes and he just like, Dylan's like, I don't want to hear you. you d oh, you, you did me the favor? Okay, fine, whatever. Like, don't talk. And he'll say it. He'll be like, he's mad at me. I said, yeah, because you're not coming around anymore. You can't tell them that you're going to be around and not be around. It's the same thing. Like when their father, like, oh, I'm going to be around, I'm going to be around, around, and then you're not around. I said, but it's different. It's different. Yeah. So me meeting somebody is not, no. It's just me. I just work and take care of my kids, and that's it. All right, Mohan. What do you do for self-care, though, to take care of yourself so that you're in a good space to take care of the boys? I've been practicing Miss Martial Arts for over 10 years. Excuse me? You think it's I good? could before, but now I could do it with a little finesse. That's what I tell people. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I, I love that. Somebody doing that. I mean, it, it looks but nice. It, but it helps, you, it helps you kind of become more zen, right? It helps you become yeah, more zen. And I like go to, more... um, I don't know if you ever heard of them, Tiger Showman. Yeah, so yeah, I've of been course. there 10 years. Um, I haven't been consistent, but mm -hmm. I always go. Regardless, uh -huh. you know, even when I put on the weight, menopause, or I still go. Um, but I do that. But other than that, nothing much because work takes up most of my time. And then I come home, I deal with the kids. You know, we like uh, today's Friday. So Friday is movie night. So we'll watch something on Disney Plus or something like that. Uh, or, you know. Uh, okay. No, I think if I wouldn't have had that relationship, I still wouldn't have had a relationship after their father. One, I don't go anywhere to meet anybody. Where am I going to go? I have nowhere to go. I have to find, I can't leave them alone for too long. Like somebody. Do you, do you, do you have a restaurant? Not anymore. Or a not, since, not since COVID. Nope. But uh, you can yes, still have somebody. But when they were reinstating services, you know, because for a time they had stopped uh -huh. services. They still, 
it's the same thing. I guess there's a shortage because now I don't I don't have respite. But even when I did, what agency? What wait? What agency you working? Um, I get respite from QSAC. I have respite through um. The problem is the time of the day that I need the respite. It has to be in the evening. Yeah, me too. I have respite in the evening. But what is the name of the? Oh, and they have to be Hold vaccinated. I'm gonna get it for you right now. That. No, no, yeah, the person that I have is vaccinated. So my person, uh, the inclusive links, they're not the best with the customer service. I'm going to tell you that right now. But they do have workers that are working, and I did have an emergency in November that I no longer had the respite worker that was working with me able to work because they had an emergency, had to leave the country. So they were able to get me somebody from the neighborhood that is able to work with Aiden, and this is the person that is taking him, like picking him up off the bus and taking him to different things in the community mm -hmm. and all of that. So I can give right. you the information. Because I've, I've had, weeks. like, they um, can stay home. Because that's important. Let me tell you, if I didn't have the in the, the respite worker, I wouldn't do all but the stuff that I, I Even do. when I had the respite worker, I didn't do everything that I would do. Because where am I going to go by myself for three hours? Like, Um, Hello? We're gonna hang out now. That's it. We're comadres. Yeah, like, forget I, about it. So, comadres, thank you for spending time with us. And I'm gonna end the show how I always end it, which is follow me at Comadrando Pod. And you can follow Mary at. Oh, eh, what is it? <laughs> Disney. Wait. Oh my God. I don't even know. No. It's uh, awesome. Disney, Disney Mom. Right? Mom 316. Yeah. Okay. And if you have any questions at all, please, for me or for Mary, please feel free to send me a comadregram at my new email, comadres, which is marcy at comadreandopod.com or slide up into my DMs. Thank you for spending time we with can go your comadres, on all night. We can and go on I will see again. you guys so soon. Just... Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you for Mary, thank me. you so much for being on the show. I'm honored. All right. Take care. Don't hang up. Entre comadres.